Hi everyone, I hope you're well. So today I have a new setup um, and I also am using a different camera. Maybe the camera is an issue but I'm still using the same microphone, the Yeti. So hopefully it's good enough. Um, the white balance is a little different, it's a little difficult. Today I wanted to talk about my 2022 favorites. I have been doing this kind of video for a few years, pretty much since I started this channel. Um, and I just would like to um, do them sometimes to like look back at what I liked previous years and just to kind of I guess archive what have been my favorites of course for each year and what I've been into um, I don't think it needs a lot of explanation but I'm feeling good today um, I actually had a, a, um, an incident is kind of an exaggerated way of seeing it but I had this thing happen to me today um, in the morning. I was walking outside, I had gone to the grocery store and going coming back a bee got stuck in my hair like around this area and that has actually happened to me twice before and th those two times I ended up getting stung by the bee as I was trying to free it from my hair but this time it didn't actually sting me. It I just kind of was fr frozen and I was like still completely and it just flew away was able to free itself um and I don't know I kind of felt that was some sort of good omen I'm not typically I'm not a superstitious person but it was good okay so um I guess my relationship with bees is becoming a little bit more positive. One of my favorites this year is one that I bought more or less recently and it's the Olaplex number no. 7 bonding oil. This is pretty expensive for this little bottle, however, it's a great hair oil. Um, it's extremely lightweight while also doing all the things that a hair oil should do. It's, uh, it gives you shine, it's... Uh, restores your hair of course since it's Olaplex it actually has that kind of bond building ingredient active ingredient that uh, only they have because it's apparently patented or something but yes this is a great product like I said it's really expensive but I mean I've been using it twice a week pretty much since I got it which is like some four months ago so it's been used quite a lot and it's almost completely full because you really only need a few little drops every time um, and that's more than enough. I actually use more than is recommended and still I don't go through it that fast. So it is very much a recommended product, especially if you have really damaged hair, which mine is definitely in the damaged category. Another one uh, which I think I have... I used it up completely and I haven't been able to repurchase it, but it was definitely still an, a favorite. And it's the G9 Skin white in milk sunscreen and that one is such a nice sunscreen i never thought i would actually enjoy putting a sunscreen on because typically the the kind of i guess conventional sunscreens are really unpleasant to put on they're kind of like clay like and they don't feel nice especially if you have dry skin i think even if you have oily skin if you have oily skin they feel oily apparently according to people anyway and if you have dry skin in my experience they feel dry already like putting putting them on even over a moisturizer they already feel like they're drying you the formula is really nice and not just on the skin but it's pleasant to put on it doesn't have a fragrance that i can remember like i said i used it up a while ago but i do remember really really liking it so a makeup favorite i think i had the same product as a favorite last year but it's a different version if that makes sense this is the KVD Tattoo Liner in the shade Mad Max Brown and I think I had the same one last year maybe or maybe there was a Stila one in black, now I'm not sure but this I think I feel like this has probably been reformulated and I say that because this one I actually like even more than the version that I bought last year um, not for the color, I mean I like the brown, I like the idea of having a brown liner, I'm actually wearing it right now, as you can see it's still dark, um, despite being brown, just not stark black. Um, but the formula is also really, really long wearing. With the previous one I remember that I wasn't able to take a nap, for example, and wake up with my liner intact. And with this one, I would be able to do it. I have done it once. I do remove my contact lenses, but I don't necessarily remove my makeup before taking a nap. 
because I don't sleep on my face. Um, I do remove it before sleeping, of course, at night. But, and also this is the con of this one, I guess, is that it's a little bit hard to remove. Um, it does take a little bit of, of rubbing with micellar water. It is easier to do it with um, an oil cleanser, one of those solid oil cleansers, you know, but I hate using those because I always feel kind of oily afterwards. I do use them when I have to, especially when I use waterproof mascara or these type of these types of um, liners, products like these that are just harder to remove. Um, but yeah, it is definitely worth it. Um, I pretty much use it on a daily basis. I'm definitely really into eyeliner, so it's like a daily wear type product for me. And another makeup product, which I think is the second to last one actually. I was gonna say it's the last one, but it's not. This is the Moira um, Love Heat Cream Blush in the shade I Miss You. And as you can see, this is a hot pink color. It's what I'm wearing today as well. The lights kind of wash it out, but it's actually quite heavy, a bit heavier in person. Um, I actually apply more blush when I'm going to film because I know that the lights wash it off, wash it out. Um, and it's very nice to put it on. It's not difficult to blend and it, the color itself, the shade itself is also very nice. Um, I think it really adds a lot of life. And it actually is, if you don't apply a lot, it's actually subtle enough to go with pretty much everything. So the last one in terms of makeup is the, well actually it's not this whole thing, it's only one shade here. This is a Colourpop um, Build It Yourself palette. I ordered from Colourpop twice this year and I kind of regret it a little bit. Because their customer service is not amazing. I know I've heard a lot of people say that their customer service is not good. And I also didn't really love how they tr they solved my problem. I feel like it wasn't really what they should do. But anyways, um, my the product that I liked here the most is this single shadow, which is called Cloud. Um, and it's this metallic shade. Um, it's a sort of lilac pink. To, let me see, maybe I shouldn't actually do a close-up instead of trying to show it to you on camera. But it's a sort of, it's like a very cool tone pink, almost a lilac color. The base is that color, but it's like a duochrome. So it shifts to this really light kind of yellowy green color. Um, and it's quite, I wouldn't say it's glittery, I mean it's, it definitely has some mica in there but it doesn't have chunks of glitter it does kind of provoke some fallout on your under eyes on your face but i don't really mind too much it's a cute uh product and it stays on well i mean there's nothing uh to be there's nothing to be to complain in terms of the formula itself but the color itself is really cute um most of the, the palette um i'm not extremely impressed by i feel like the colors look the nicer on the website and they're not actually as flattering on the eyes even the neutrals here i feel like they almost look reddish when i wear them on my eyes so they ended up not being a favorite this is actually another duochrome here it's one of those um those typical brown to green duochromes which i'm not extremely excited by my my eye um eye looks don't tend to be very dark so i don't really go for those darker base colors so something that i made this year that counts as a favorite to me um is this headdress and this is a kind of classic lolita type of headdress as you can see it has a lot of lace everywhere um and i got this pretty much all from the fabric store and some stuff I already owned, but uh, it's a very like typical old school Lolita black and white headdress, rectangle headdress. And I also added some clips on the back so that I could wear it without it slipping around. And I actually have two layers of lace here. Although I think my main mistake with this one was that I didn't make sure to have the lace ruffle or get gathered on two different directions so it all is going to the same direction if that makes sense let me show you what i mean all of the lace is going to the same direction not sure if you can tell what i mean from this 
but yeah probably I should have like make sure to alternate but I don't really mind too much it looks really nice from the front the back is a little bit very you know amateurish but I was able to make it from both hand sewing and using my sewing machine and I also added these bows that are also made of lace it's themselves um, so I made the bows and then, then I sewed them on what I, I do another thing is that the bows themselves are quite voluminous so they add a lot of volume to the sides of my face when I wear it of my head I also have this brand headdress that I bought this year as well this is a baby the stars shine bright headdress and it's so beautiful um, it actually sounds a little bit when you wear it you can kind of hear the the charms here um, when they move because the logo is the is a B inside you know a letter B inside of a heart and that looks really cute and it's just a regular solid black headdress I can wear this with a few of my dresses that have a, a black base I actually have three Lolita dresses that have a black base so I could wear this with any of them. This year is the year where I finally started to get into Lita fashion. Um, on the previous years I had bought a few things here and there and made one or two cords but the year when I was really able to like actually spend money and start making a Lolita wardrobe. And one of the pieces that helped me create, build that wardrobe is this one. This is a blouse. As you can see it's angelic pretty and this was actually a first brand um, piece that I ever got and like of course I got it this year it has this kind of green glitter embedded on it but the glitter of course does not come off when you wash it um, it's an extremely high quality blouse as you can imagine from Angelic Pretty um, it has all these beautiful details as you can see it's not just the glitter but the lace at the bottom and the ruffles near the sleeve and it also has this really thin black ribbon and the collar itself has more of the the glitter and the lace with the um ap logo it says right there ap for angelic pretty this actually goes a lot with my this actually goes with my diamond honey dress the Nautical Treasure JSK and other things in terms of fashion that were my favorite this year um, in terms of my own outfits that I wore include my cohort with another bodyline dress which I have shown on this channel I showed myself modifying it and making some black and white socks to go with it it was the Ladder Lace OP with cape set the black and white version and I really liked that cord it's almost a little bit old school looking and another one of my favorite outfits was was this dress that I wore for a Christmas party it's kind of a retro kind of 40s or 50s looking dress but it is of course a I guess it's kind of like a um, rockabilly version of that kind of a I guess it's a rockabilly type dress and it actually came with its own petticoat which is a black petticoat I'm not sure if I would be able to wear that with Lolita at some point um, because it is organza which actually impressed me a little bit I would expect a petticoat that comes with a dress to be like tulle or something but it actually surprised me how nice it was and it was very comfortable to wear the petticoat as well and another outfit that I wore and I really liked was one that I mentioned a little while ago I was talking about the um, pirate cord um, that I made for Halloween this year I think it was Halloween yes um, with the diamond honey nautical treasure JSK and the first time I think I wore it with a white blouse if I'm not mistaken this time I wore it with the angelic pretty blouse um, and with my black bodyline shoes which are another thing that I got this year that pair of black bodyline shoes um, which are quite comfortable they I was able to wear them with a couple of inserts here and there just to make sure that I wouldn't um, hurt my ankles as I wore them for the first time but actually they were pretty nice and comfortable from the get-go and I wore it with my regular petticoat from classical puppets 
and um, the headwear was the pirate. Um, the pirate hat that I have, the tricorn, I guess, not really technically a pirate hat, but you know, I was of course going for a pirate themed cord. Um, so I also wore it with a belt. I think I removed it for the pictures that I wore, uh, that I took because I didn't actually take pictures, unfortunately, of that outfit as I was out. I only took them once I came, had come back home. Um, so they're not the best pictures, but you kind of get the idea. So I want to talk about the music that I was listening to the most this year. And this year I actually made specific categories within the music category because I feel like they just fit really well with how I listen to music uh, last year, 2022. Overall artist, which was my favorite last year, was Dead Can Dance. And of course, they've been one of my favorite bands for a long time, but for some reason last year they were especially... A favorite I was listening to them over and over specifically the songs Wild in the Woods, Labor of Love, Amnesia, Black Sun and The Trial. Wild in the Woods I hadn't really gotten that much into until this year. The other ones and Amnesia as well. The other ones I had liked a lot before but I just especially listened to them a lot last year. And in the category of favorite album that was new to me is Colors 2 by Between the Buried and Me which was recommended to me a long time ago, probably more than a year ago, um, by a commenter on this channel um, on one of my music related videos and I actually ended up liking it quite a lot. Some songs more than others, but I overall really ended up liking the album and listening to certain songs over and over. And on the category of rediscovered favorites, I have Nico, the artist herself as a whole. Um, I got back into listening to her by getting more or less getting into the rest of her discography specifically the album the end and also by listening to some of her live or demo demo versions of from the two albums that have been among my favorites for a long time which are the marvel index and desert shore um i haven't really gotten to listen to listening to those demos and those live versions for some reason i think those are really her best ones even after listening to the later ones but I did like the song Secret Side from the end a lot and I ended up listening to that one a lot throughout the year. And in terms of movies and TV shows, I honestly didn't really watch that much new stuff. This year I am planning to watch more um, movies, new movies to me, new TV shows, not just rewatching previous things that I already know I like. The X-Files, I got really back into it all over again and back into MSR, so Mulder and Scully relationship, which is apparently how people used to refer to the ship as, or apparently it still gets referred to that way. I've been shipping those two from the very beginning, since the first time I watched that show. Um, of course, that show was already old by the time I first watched it because it was like 2010 or something. No, it was like maybe 2015, 2013, something um, when I first watched it. But I really liked it from the beginning and I've always thought that those two characters had the most amazing chemistry together. I know the actors didn't, but the characters really do. And I was, of course, a little bit disappointed with the later seasons, specifically 10 and 11. But I kind of knew, I'm glad that I didn't watch those seasons when they first came out because I would have felt kind of let down watching it without any kind of previous um, warnings, I guess, because I knew going from the beginning, from the beginning, going into, you know, watching the whole show from the pilot episode, I knew that there were some things that I wasn't gonna like at all in the last few seasons, specifically the very last one. Um, season 11, which I don't actually know for a fact that it's going to be last season, but I do figure that it probably is. And in terms of books, I have to say that I also didn't read that many books as a whole this year because I have been reading a lot, a lot, a lot more. In fact, I would say that last year I actually read more that year that I, than I have ever in any other year in my life, but mostly they haven't been full on books it's been like parts of books uh maybe a few chapters from a book or articles things like that so things that i can't really count as full books that i read and my favorite book this year is one of those few full books that i read read and interestingly it's not fiction it's actually technically a historical 
book. It's a book about history and also about a specific event. Um, it's The Return of Martin Guerre by Natalie Simon Davis. And like I said, it's a non-fiction book, but it's basically about a story in a way. Um, it's the story of this woman in kind of like late medieval, um, early Renaissance times. And it's set in a little beer village in the Pyrenees between Spain and France. Um, and the introduction of the story is also is basically about the methodology behind how this whole thing was written. And the author is basically talking about how she took certain documents that are typically were at the time at least not typically taken by historians as as proper valid documents for writing history but she used them with a different in a different way like fiction for example she used fiction of the time of the same time that she was studying to figure out what could be considered plausible or likely or what would be expected for people to do in certain time in certain situations at the time because the story because it's about these people in a village it's not like these people have written documents about their own selves so the story itself is about this woman like i said and she marries this man and after some years he ends up running away and some years later there's this other guy that arrives to the village and he pretends to be this guy that had run away whose name is Martin Guerre of course, the name of the character in the title pretty much everyone knows from the beginning or at least people suspect from the beginning that it isn't really him that it's just someone pretending to be him but they kind of take him, him, take him in regardless because they kind of are you know, it's such a small place and they kind of need people there, they kind of need people to replace him and do these activities that he was doing. And also the wife is in a situation where she doesn't want to remarry because according to the author, from what she is able to interpret from these documents, it seems to her that the this woman didn't want to remarry because she was really... Uh, worried about her own reputation and she didn't want to be seen as this woman who had remarried and instead she thought it was ideal if either she lived as a single woman now or she or the guy simply came back you know Martin Guerre came back which is more or less what happened so she takes him in as well and accepts him even though what she the author believes is that this woman always knew or at least from early on she knew that it wasn't really him but for a number of reasons that she details in the book she decided to accept him and basically pretend that it was him or in be being ready really to to also kind of feign ignorance and innocence so that's kind of what's going on in the story of course later things go on because he starts to get a little too comfortable with the people in the village and starts to kind of abuse their hospitality and they um, start to reconsider that he's not really who he claims to be and that gets him in a bunch of trouble and also gets her, the wife, in a, in a lot of trouble. So that is my favorite book from this year and um, that is also of course one that I read for my masters um, and of course I was supposed to look a bit more at the methods of the author rather than at the story itself but I also ended up getting a lot of really entranced by the story itself it was actually really interesting especially knowing that it was really something that happened even though it seems like something that would be fictional my favorite games which is gonna be my last category for this video um, of course as always Voltage and Ikesen for Voltage I would say Enchanted in the Moonlight by with uh, Chikage the specific uh, character being Chikage. This is a guy that I had had, I think I had had him on my wish list for a while and I finally bought the, his story and I actually ended up liking a lot. The thing is, the story is kind of weird, okay? There's something, I didn't read the first introduction, the introduction episode, I pretty much never do because I feel like you get the hang of the story anyway. There's something weird in that story where the main character kind of I won't know how to explain this, um, and also it's Japanese, so maybe it's based on mi mythology or something like that. But these these characters um, are like some kind of spirit 
or like a paranormal type of being and they have to take energy from her to survive or to get stronger at least but the way they do it is basically by uh, by by being affectionate with her if you catch my drift and basically the more affectionate you are with her with the main character the more powerful you get so these guys are pretty much um kind of uh fighting for her attention pretty much um and so it does make some moments in the story kind of rapey in context but i mean nothing actually like that happens because nobody ever actually forces her or even like really pressures her that much to do anything she doesn't want to you know um, and him specifically, the, the character Chikage is uh, especially respectful towards her and despite the concept of the story, I thought the character was really cute. My other favorite in terms of these dating games, dating scenes, is Motonari from Ikesen, which kind of has an asterisk because there are a lot of flaws and cliches in his story, a lot of things that I'm like, I don't know, but I overall really enjoyed the story, like I said, you, you have probably noticed at this point that I'm really into the whole pirate thing and of course Motonari is a pirate. I think the Motonari story is actually really sweet and I rewatched it actually. I, um, I had recorded the route when I played it so I was able to essentially just read it twice. Um, because like I've said, Onikesen, you're not really able to do that. If you want to reread a story, you have to essentially pay for it again. I hope you enjoyed this video, um, whatever you might have taken from it. And I want to let you know that I haven't stopped making videos at all. In fact, I'm planning to do a few more just this month. I'm not sure when they will come up, but I'm planning to do a book review of a controversial video, um, a controversial book that came out um, a few years ago. And I'm also planning to do a part two on my reviews for zero waste products. Those are my two videos that I'm planning to have next. And yeah, so I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!